Red tide is a condition in uh, tidal waters where filter feeding shellfish such as clams, oysters, and mussels accumulate a potent toxin um, that is in the seawater caused by a naturally occurring marine algae. The reason we're concerned about that is that the toxin can be fatal uh, if ingested in sufficient quantities. Uh, the red tide toxin can be fatal to humans. Uh, it is a poison that affects the central nervous system of a human being. And in low quantities, uh, humans can be mildly affected with nausea, dizziness, um, those sorts of symptoms. But in high doses, the toxin can be fatal. This condition is referred to as red tide because sometimes these algae blooms can be so intense that they can discolor the water red. However, many of the uh, important and significant blooms don't discolor the water at all. So the term red tide is a bit of a misnomer. Um, and also, it's a bit of a misnomer as well because these events have actually have little to do with the tides. Uh, red tide occurs in New England and typically begins in the spring and can go through the summer as well as the fall. The most intense blooms tend to occur in the about mid-spring, around May and June, when uh, there's a lot of sunlight and nutrients in the water. Uh, often we see these blooms subside a little bit in the middle of the summer and they can sometimes reappear in the fall. Red tide is caused by a naturally occurring marine algae. Uh, there are many different types of marine algae. Most of them are harmless to humans. Some of them cause, uh, produce poisons. Uh, the one that is a, a particular concern in New England tidal waters is the algae that produces paralytic shellfish poisoning, and that's the type of red tide that is most common in New England. Red tide blooms occur every year, beginning in the offshore waters. Um, the intensity of the bloom varies from year to year. It depends on uh, different factors such as how many uh, organisms happen to be in the water at the beginning of the bloom season. Um, other conditions such as uh, water chemistry, the amount of sunlight and the weather, all of these things affect how intense the bloom will be and whether or not that bloom which begins in the offshore ocean moves into uh, nearshore areas where people dig clams, oysters and mussels. These red tide blooms begin in the open ocean, uh, well offshore, and depending on what the weather, uh, the winds, and the tidal currents are, uh, these blooms can be moved it closer into shore where people harvest shellfish. Red tide blooms occur spring, summer, and fall in New England. Typically, we see the blooms begin in May. They tend to peak in late May or June, um, tail off, through, through the summer months and then we can see them reappear later on in the fall. But on a year-to-year -year basis, we see a, a number of different patterns. For those who dig their own shellfish, it's very important that they pay attention to uh, announcements about what areas are open and which are closed. Uh, the state of New Hampshire, as well as the other New England states, uh, have rather extensive monitoring programs to make sure that we know where the toxin is present um, and what areas um, are appropriate for harvesting and which ones people should stay away from. As far as commercially uh, consumed shellfish, whether it's from a fish market or from a restaurant, as long as people are buying their shellfish from a reputable dealer or a restaurant, the shellfish that you find in the commercial markets have been carefully sourced from areas that have been tested uh, for the presence of red tide toxin. So uh, people can feel confident about the shellfish they find in the commercial markets. Red tide poisoning or paralytic shellfish poisoning includes symptoms such as numbness, tingling, giddiness, nausea, headaches, or drowsiness. And these are symptoms that typically uh, appear within a few hours of consuming the shellfish. If the victim eats shellfish that are contaminated with very high levels of toxin, uh, the symptoms can become more serious, um, even resulting in death uh, caused by respiratory arrest. Uh, victims of paralytic shellfish poisoning need to seek medical attention immediately. Uh, there is no antidote for the toxin. However, most victims uh, survive uh, exposure to the toxin. Serious cases do require uh, respiratory support. 
uh, on a ventilator. But within days or weeks, most victims uh, recover from exposure to the toxin without any ill effects or long-lasting effects. In New England, you cannot get sick with red tide poisoning from swimming. The only way to uh, get sick from red tide is to eat contaminated shellfish. The types of shellfish that are affected by red tide poisoning include filter feeding shellfish such as clams, oysters, and mussels. These are a problem for consumers because people tend to eat the entire animal. Um, there are other filter feeders such as scallops which although they are filter feeders they are generally not considered to be a health threat because uh, people who eat scallops are generally only eating the muscle, the adductor muscle, and not the entire animal. There are other types of shellfish in New England waters including uh, lobsters, crabs, and shrimp. And because they are not filter feeders, they're not really considered to be uh, an issue with red tide poisoning. However, with lobsters, consumers do need to be aware that while the meat, the claw meat, the tail meat is absolutely fine, uh, the lobster tamale, which is the green uh, material in the body cavity, can accumulate the red tide toxin and therefore should be avoided.